Welcome everyone, this is Pineleaf Needles and you are listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Andang. Hey everybody. Etheros. Uh, hey, yeah, uh, hey. Draculetta. Hey everybody, how's it going? Raxwolf. Hello, Lotro. Sithrith. Hello. And we'll now go into our game news, and unfortunately, it's not as good as last week's because we have another round of layoffs at Turbine, and does anyone know what this is all about? Nope. And they're not going to tell not us. Not really. And they're not going to tell us, yeah. And um, they're they not going to They use pretty much us. nearly the same kind of corporate speak they used last time there was a round of layoffs to be like oh this is a we can't talk about it we can't tell you anything it's just part of normal business they basically used a lot of words to say absolutely nothing whatsoever yeah um yep the only thing that we really know is that infinite crisis just finished up with a big update and so People are assuming that possibly a lot of people from that team were let go. Um, we do know that some Locho devs were let go, but we're not going to mention specific names because technically we don't know 100% for sure and out of respect. Um, but obviously it's a, a fairly serious thing, but it's almost made less serious because it's happened a few times before. and. What I mean by that is it almost seems like this is just kind of normal business practice for, for WB's management of Turbine. Mm -hmm. and, and one good thing I've noticed, um, a lot of other developers and game studios have um, made a point of you know, reaching out on Twitter and other social media services, telling the Turbine employees who have been laid off that you know there's other studios hiring, don't worry about it, you'll be able to yeah. get another job. Yeah, and a similar thing happened last time. It seems like Turbine's considered a pretty reputable studio. At least the you know employees are there, even though it's, it seems like you know being managed by Warner Brothers isn't necessarily seeming thankfully, to be the best thing. Thankfully, their response mm -hmm. in actually confirming this and everything was a bit quicker on the uptake this time around. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. Yep. Um, if we want to go ahead and move into the uh, uh, reassurance that was uh, given by Freilorn, I guess. Right, and that reassurance is that the M that the layoffs do not in any way impact the current plans for Lotro. Brax, do you have any more information on that? Yeah, so I guess the only thing I really noticed was that they haven't really put this in writing that I've seen anywhere, but it was mentioned on the live stream the day after the layoffs occurred. Um, so Freelorn is doing a live stream where he's he's leveling a hobbit and uh, taking some questions. And this was one of the first questions that was asked uh, was, you know, do you have any comment about the layoffs? And he said, the only thing I'm going to say basically is that it has no effect and I'm not going to answer any more questions about it. And so, um, again, I think the thing I noted in, in the post was, now, he didn't go into detail as to whether the current things that weren't affected were the things that they had planned that, that only Turbine knew about, or if it was just specifically the things that we know about, which only reaches into maybe the very beginning of next year. Well, uh, actually, they have mentioned things up to Pelennor Fields in their long-range scope that they've given us. They have mentioned those things. That's correct, but I don't. I don't recall them ever giving kind of a timeline for that type of thing. Have they? Uh, Only I think well, it's we'll, as far as like early late. They just know, gave yeah, early late. I mean, that's just 2015. Yeah. 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 yeah Osgiliath. They they said oh, we'll get Osgiliath in 2000 and and 15 as 15, well. Yep. In 2015 and also Minas Tirith in 2015, and it will get Flanor Fields in 2016. Okay, right. Okay. So th that's a fair point. So th those large, very nebulous things that they plan to deliver are still um, are not affected by the layoffs. Correct. They did say I that think... they'd be talking more about the roadmap 
after the update, though, which yes. kind of gets me well, curious typical. as to... Yeah. It is typical, but yeah. mentioning that right now makes me kind of curious, but, I mean, it might just be... You know, well, fair, to be way. fair, that was actually a question that I asked um, on the live stream, which was, when are we going to hear some more information? Okay. And that was a response to that. So, And Rowan has said on the forums, uh, when he was answering a question about the LI update, that he is going to get people to answer that too after, I think, 15 actually launches. Well, I think I saw something in the forums about that, actually, that they were going to try and get that to working for all levels of LIs. Something like that, yeah. Let me bring up the yeah. exact uh, quote because it is kind of ish he, he doesn't really isn't really specific enough about it himself well that's because they don't know what they can do yet uh yes so he says here the general plan with legendary arms is that you can advance and imbue so the original plan they had back it, when this is going to release this update is that you could only imbue an item that was at level 100 cap and fully leveled they um he says uh horse which is the um developer uh, may have pulled back on that, but we fully intend to make our existing allies imbuable. Right. Uh, but that doesn't really answer the question of whether we'll be able to do it below level 100. Because he just says existing, and that doesn't really... I don't think anyone would want to jump to the gun of assuming that it's all levels of allies, because that's a pretty big yeah. uh, leap from what they originally planned. Yeah, it's it's very vague, but I mean... I'm sure that they're probably still figuring out exactly what they can do by the next update as well. Now that they have more time, it'll be well. And the fact that they they've answered do. that they've attempted to answer it at least assures me that they've heard the concern. So yeah, hopefully um, they'll be trying to do something about it. Here's my thing though in regards to these layoffs and like how they impact Locho. There's one thing that like a lot of people say that you know. Locher's future is a lot more uncertain now and stuff like that, which I do agree with. But one thing remains against that as far as evidence goes, and that's that we haven't had a server merge yet. They haven't even considered it. Haven't even considered it yet. And I'm pretty sure that hosting that many players, like, that's that's definitely a big cost. Um, I don't know how big of a cost that is in the grand scheme of things. But um, yeah. I think until we see a server merge or something like that, I think that Lotro is still in a decent place. At least that's kind of my optimistic side. I think that this is more it's just viable. Yeah, I think this is more just Warner Brothers' typical business practice, honestly, which is really sad. Um, I I can't think of I I don't think that it's because Lotro hasn't made enough money. Um, I'd be surprised if that was the case. Um, it might no, mean practice. that it might mean Lotro isn't making enough money up to Warner Brothers standards, but I highly doubt I, that one, Lotro isn't making a profit. Well, I think it's more to do with Infinite Crisis and what you yeah. said earlier, and that is that they're not gearing up for another major update immediately, so therefore they're going to have to lay off all those people that were working on the previous update. Mm -hmm. think, and um, usually, um, you know, most of the people working at Turbine are pretty flexible. So even if they took, you know, took away some people on the Lotro team, doesn't mean that there are not the same number of employees working on Lotro currently, per se. I think, um, I think Brax was talking about this earlier this week on Twitter about uh, this subject in that this whole setup of just throwing away a whole bunch of employees, which is pretty much what they've been doing every time there's a major update that goes out seems to be, or at least have become standard practice for not just Warner Brothers, but the industry in general for MMOs. Too, too many companies, I think, in general, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but, I mean, especially in the, the gaming industry, pretty much once a game or a game series, I mean, even some game series, they'll they'll lay off the whole team, and then they'll still have like a planned game in like three years. 
I don't understand how you can operate that way as a company. Like, I understand that there's costs and stuff, but, you know, be working ahead on the next game. It just... It seems especially cruel to do it for MMOs, too, because unlike, say, a game where you just make the game and it's done, you've done your work on it, it's complete. With MMOs, it's a constant, you know, working on it. It's like a painting you've been working on for 10 years. You only got to work on five of it, and then you just thrown off. It it seems especially right. cruel with mm-hmm. regards to those kind of games. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. On the um, subject of them saying it's not going to affect their current plans, I'm not convinced it's going to completely uh, make them unaffected. I think their core mm. plans for it, what they were definitely going to do, is going to stay the same. So Osgiliath, Minas Tirith, and then Pelnor Fields is going to stay the same. I think a lot of the maybe the maybes of what they might have done are going to be maybe pushed off the table. Like, for example, the Osgiliath PvP situation. I'm thinking that maybe will be something that's just pushed aside now because they just simply don't have the resources or the manpower anymore for it. That's not based on any kind of evidence. That's just right. my suspicion and my feeling about it. Yeah, well, let's face it. Based on past history, the odds of getting a PvP map there were... Low well, yeah. start anyway. I mean, the uh, the odds yeah. of a PvP map, regardless, are extremely low. Whether or not you know the layoff affects that or not, I think um, this definitely mm-hmm. didn't help the odds. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so. yeah. you, you're you're absolutely on the right path, though, Ethel Rose, because that's what happens: is you you start to when you're working with a skeleton crew, you concentrate on the core, and the, the other things that have been backburnered or thrown out there as ideas, those are the things that get trimmed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I said earlier this week on Twitter as well, like, their plans might be the same, but their plans might be unaffected, but the effectiveness of how they, you know, do those plans and execute them, yeah, the way I don't you think it's it, going to be, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. I, it's just not going to be the same level. I'm confident we'll get to Minas Tirith and be able to experience all that. After that, oh, yeah, I'm sure. wondering if this changes any of the plans, or if this is just you know, like normal business practice, and they they still have the plans to you know keep supporting Lotro as long as they were before the layoff side. I don't know. Um, it'll be very interesting to find out what happens post Minas Tirith. Now, I think, um, or post Pelennor Fields, or post Pelennor Fields, even yeah. Um, it'll be it'll be very interesting to see how Lotro develops over the next few years and a little bit of a side note this was very poorly timed in a PR point of view with update 15 just going on to beta and having yeah. all that positive well, not even PR. Just PR but just from a from a just oh, what's the word I'm thinking of effectiveness standpoint like just laying people off in the middle of testing an update does yeah. not sound yeah. like a good idea yeah, it it yeah, just well, seems very poorly okay. poorly timed for for multiple on the, reasons. On the flip side, though, if you wait till after the drop, now you're into the holiday season, so mm-hmm. they might have been looking ahead to that in their defense. Not that That's any true. of this is really completely defensible, but right, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a fair point. I think the other thing is, I think this is the first time we've seen two rounds of layoffs in the same year. Yeah, it seems especially painful for the uh, at least like from an outside look of the game to see mm-hmm. two sets of layoffs in the same year it doesn't really give a glowing uh testament to its stability i mean at the very least i think that morale is hurt both inside development and you know the player base as well um having two layoffs in in one year is a lot to take at, for a team and, you know, they've had so much change with, you know, Rowan coming in and all that stuff. I mean, it'd be it'd be a lot to be just, just working on that team and, you know, not sure if tomorrow since... you'd be laid off. Like, that's that's yeah. very terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyone else have anything to add before we go on? I think we've covered um, everything. Yeah. Just... Just uh, give best hopes to to those that were affected that they can find uh, great jobs at other studios. Yep. Yes, because I'm sure there are some studios that 
we'll decide that Warner's loss is our gain. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So let us go on to the store sales track. What do we have for sale? Free sample of the week through October 23rd, simple rally horn. Use coupon code RALLY5, R-A-L-L-Y-5, and you will get five horns per account. <laughs> I'm not sure why you would want them, but hey, whatever. Good no idea. 20% <laughs> off the following shared storage, vault upgrades, inventory slots, and the currency cap. So a pretty decent sale for once. Next week will be LIs because this is a decent sale, and that's usually what they do. <laughs> All right, then let's go into the player news, and we'll begin with Gondor and Beyond, and this is a look into the latest map. Ending, what's this about? Yeah, so um, with the, I guess, last update and now this update as well, I've had kind of a map discussion video. Uh, this time, I got help uh, predicting into the future with uh, Sithrith and Ethelros, as we talked about the uh, the new Gondor map that was included into the game and um, on beta, and it shows just how close we are to Minas Tirith, Osgiliath, Mordor, and you know all the things that have felt so far away for so long, um, and now all of a sudden they're they're like right on top of us. It's just next year that um, we'll be getting them, hopefully, assuming things really aren't affected. Um, and one thing that we talked about is that we're going to Osgiliath next, and yet Minas Tirith is directly in the path of Osgiliath. Um, so it, it kind of seems, you know, out of place aside from just like, you know, a development point of view on, on Turbine's side where, you know, they need to... We follow the river. ...be able to. But yeah, we're, we're following the river around Minas Tirith, which I think makes it even harder to... <laughs> to be uh, not seeing it yet, but um, you know, the more time they can spend on Minas Tirith, the yeah. better, because it definitely needs it. Yeah, but the Osgiliath is in the middle of the river, so therefore Osgiliath is, is the quicker place, to, I would think would be the easiest place to go if you're going up the river. But mm. everybody wants to go to Minas Tirith. That's true, yeah, but I assuming... I think we'd have to find a reason to uh, go to Osgiliath. There'd have to be a good like a reason. To. Exactly. There'd have to be a good reason to not go straight to Minas Tirith since it's on the way. And in theory, there'd be something going on. Like, at the very least, we'd want to stop there and get, like, you know, food supplies and stuff like that. <laughs> like, I mean, there'd, there'd be some type of, like, basically... They don't have food supplies in there. They're under siege. But we don't know that. And if we knew they were under siege, don't you think we'd go there and try to help out? Well, minor little detail there. <laughs> That's something that everyone has to It just seems uh, completely illogical. Like, they, they're they going to have to have a good reason or just not cover it and hope that players don't notice. Um, we, we are going to two. try that. to under, undermine the bet. In other words, try to outflank the enemy so as to break down the enemy attack on on oh, Minas Tirith, right? This is something that no. <laughs> mentioned in terms of the timing now because everything is so tight in terms of the hours and things are happening. Mm -hmm. They, I think they have said that they might, I don't remember exactly when they said it might be doing that um, uh, interview with Corey Olson, but uh, they would maybe be twisting the times or maybe stretching out a bit so we could possibly say go to Osgiliath and do stuff there in time to get to Minas Tirith before the siege happens. Right, and I mean the thing is, nothing's going to be happening after at Osgiliath, really. I mean, there's a few things, but, you know, really you have to go to Osgiliath first if you're going to see what's really going on there, I think. Yeah, which means we'll have to be there before it gets overrun. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I'm not sure on this, but I believe it actually gets overrun before Aragorn's uh, army takes back, back Pelagir. So I think that actually itself would be a sort of timing deviation like they did with Isengard and the Grey Company. It's pretty close, the timing there, but I'm thinking it is before, yeah. Barnabas in the chat says, is that before or after we have to talk to Elrond? <laughs> oh, oh, that is cruel. That'll be the last mission in the, the last quest in the whole game. 
go talk. Twelve runs. <laughs> <laughs> you get to oh, wave goodness. goodbye to him when he leaves Middle Earth. Hmm. That's that's part of the question sure. of the week. We can't get to that yet. Yep, we'll we'll get to that uh. in a minute, <laughs> in a, a few minutes. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, this uh, actually turned a lot of uh, community discussion up about uh, how we'd be proceeding. Um, it's honestly one of our most commented things we've had in a long time. Um, people seem to be really interested in the the points that we brought up, and you know why we're not going straight to Minas Tirith and stuff like that, and how we'll be in Mordor because we are all of a sudden you know right on the doorstep of these really, really uh, iconic story moments. So it'll be very interesting to see where we go. All right, very well. Then let us head on to thoughts about raiding. And Bloodborne posted an article on his thoughts about raiding. And Brax, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, Bloodburn's a new uh, contributor to the site, and uh, he's a very, very prolific Lotro player. He has uh, he has a level 100 of every single class, and he streams all the time. Um, so he, he he I think he said he's been around since since beta too. I know he's been around a very long time, but um, he, this is his his first post on Lotro players. Excuse me. Come on, live show, and. Um, <laughs> He, he talks about his very first experience in, in a raid, which was the Rift, back when it was um, the highest thing you could do and the most um, prestigious thing you could accomplish in the game. And uh, how he didn't start as a raider, but then got into raiding because of that experience and uh, kind of waxes nostalgic about um, how great those days were and how they've kind of been faded into the past. And... Um, it's a fun read because I don't I don't have the same perspective that he does, and it's it's interesting to hear uh, him kind of beg and plead for a return to that type of content. Uh, although we haven't really heard we haven't really heard one way or the other whether that's ever going to happen again. Just to mention that that question got asked again on the live stream this week, and Free Lauren's answer was maybe. So <laughs> <laughs> never say never. But uh, again, this is. Uh, I, I would give this a read if if you're a, if you're a raider or have been a raider. I know he's gotten a lot of comments on the article from other people who who have the same experience from a raiding standpoint. I think post Minas Tirith, it'll be a lot more likely that they'll consider raids than it is with Minas Tirith. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to uh, really congratulate Bloodborne for this amazing article. Um, it reminds me kind of sort of of like my one of my first articles for CSTM which was basically kind of a love letter for PvP um, and it's just it's a really good argument about how those times aren't around anymore and you know it was a totally different type of the game that just isn't really being supported anymore kind of like how PvP was when I was writing about it so um, I definitely see uh, see his argument, and it just it's a very well written article. I, I recommend people check it out, even if you don't necessarily like PvP. I mean, rating. <laughs> <laughs> you got PvP on your mind. I did. Yeah, even if you don't like rating, it's a really really good article. All right, then we'll proceed into something more musical, and that is the ballad of. Kisley, which is our Lotro video highlights this week, and Andang, why did you choose this one? Well, I chose this one because it was next. I don't know. I've done so many of these that um, I just have some that uh, that stand out. Um, Bards, Beards, and Longbeards does a great job every time, and it's cool to see um, a fairly large-scale battle, considering it's done just by players. Um, in the game and it tells a, a pretty cool story so if you have not seen this yet I, I recommend checking it out and uh, Nirvana in response to this said it's one of their favorites so people seem to really like this uh, this video by the BBB 
All right, very well. And our forgotten lore piece this week is the Silver Deep Guard House in the Forgotten Lore by Edocles, where he looks into this area that used to be part of the epic. I guess I had forgot. It shows you how rarely I do that side of it is I had forgotten that that was removed from the epic. How rarely you play dwarves. Yes, that's how rarely <laughs> I play dwarves, I guess, is that I had forgotten that little detail, but the Silver, Be Silver Deep guardhouse where you have to go to someone and find out why they slept on the job, so to speak. Yeah, I believe that's the place that collapses and there's meant to be something stolen from it. At least that's my memory from doing that quest a very long time well, ago. Well, yeah, he, he was knocked out by goblins who apparently were using the area as an entrance and exit to get into the Silver Deep Mines. Mm -hmm. oh, it was that or they came from the, the mines and actually I think they used the mines in order to get into there. I lair, believe so. that quest line is where the infamous Dowerhand Burglar comes from. Uh, dwarf burglar, as it were. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it probably eventually leads up to him, yeah. It is interesting to go back to these sort of places that you only get to see, like, in one, or even, like, the actual intro area, and then you never actually go back to again. Mm -hmm. And some, mm -hmm. some of them, as I think as one has mentioned, is not, not actually open in the overworld. Which is an interesting choice, I guess. Yeah. All right, then. Then now, then we'll head from Forgotten Lore into New Lore. Brax, what is your pick of the week? Today, Massively posted an article by Justin Olivetti called Test Driving Lotro's Bjorn in Class. And I know we've had some videos on Lotro players about uh, first look of uh, the Bjorn in Class and things like that. Um, this is the first kind of long-form write-up I've seen on the class that uh, does a very good job of kind of taking it to the very beginning. And here's what it looks like. Here's here's what it looks like when you roll a new Bjorning. Um, here's what happens in the starter area. Um, takes you through some of some of Sip's highs and lows of the class. My favorite line in here is uh, talking about how they've combined the the race and class. And he said. It turns out that Bjorning is both a race and a class. Only Bjornings can be Bjornings, and only Bjornings can be Bjornings. So. <laughs> that uh, whole issue is over with, though. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I thought this was a nice, nice little preview for, for those of us who... Uh, I'm, on the, I'm on the side of people who can more easily read a, uh, a, a text article than I can sit down and watch a video. Um, I would go ahead and give this a look if you're curious about the Bjorning class. All right, mm -hmm. then. Then we'll head into our news beyond Lotro, and we'll begin by asking, which side are you on, Team Arwen or Team Eowyn? We'll begin, before we have ending, tell us the poll results. Let's take a quick poll of our group here. Drac. Definitely not Eowyn. Wow, oh, not? why? She's what? annoying, and I hate her. <laughs> oh my goodness. We can't. <laughs> Never we can't liked be her in, anymore, Drac. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Wade. The first time I read that book, I hated her. I could not stand her. All right, Drac, I anymore. guess we'll, we'll say Drac by default is <laughs> yeah. Arwen. Drac so almost say... counts as two votes there. That was very <laughs> passionate. My goodness. <laughs> Brax. S seriously, what are we doing? Are you <laughs> Team Arwen or Team Eowyn? I'm not sure I understand the question. Did, did, what's That's the criteria? The Who do you like there's, better, there's Eowyn no, or Arwen? You there's make no, criteria. There's no uh, preface given to this. It's just Is this like a team... Twilight thing? Because I never read that book. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not just a Twilight thing. Which character you like better? Just Last time I one. checked, neither one of them sparkled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Maybe I, Arwen a little bit. She's yeah, an elf. Or... I'm not going to vote for an elf, so I, I guess I'll go with Eowyn. All right, we're one and one. <laughs> Sithrit. Well, obviously, Team Eowyn. Team Eowyn. Etheros? Eowyn, she killed the freaking Witch King. What did Arwen ever do? <laughs> <laughs> just, Arwen just sits around in the books and makes a banner. 
That's all she does. <laughs> and I'll have to go with the Killer of the Witch King too. So therefore, that is before we go to Andang, that gives us four to one in favor of Ewen. So Andang, what do you and our audience say? The only thing that I can give towards Arwen really is the fact that she, I guess, you know, helped the line of Gondor continue. So that's a fairly important role, I would think. Um, but she got married. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, Owen. You did so well marrying somebody. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole thing we could talk about there, but uh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> so, anyway, um, there, there's probably also some other things that she did that were pretty cool. But, um, anyway, I'm probably more for Team Aowen, um, just because, you know, she took out the Witch King. Not very many people can say that. Um, and <laughs> our... Another person can say that. Mary's the only other person I can think of who can make such a claim. Yep. <laughs> and our poll results are Team Eowyn in the lead with only 61% of the votes. That actually kind of surprised me. Um, and then Team Arwen I'm at thinking, 39%. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe Drac fudged this vote a bit. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like Eowyn so You think much. that Drac counts for 62 votes? He I might. He might have found a way. <laughs> I have my ways. Get out there and vote because it's critical that we find the answer to this burning question. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Well, believe it or not, not sure, this, this is one of our most commented polls. <laughs> so it actually did create quite a debate. Of course it did. I'm not sure. But I think Brax doesn't take this very seriously. <laughs> How can you tell? I think he's scratching the bottom of the barrel as far as polls are concerned. Honestly, this, I have a few more of these planned. These are just like the filler polls for when there's no ideas. <laughs> oh, team Mary, Team Pippin. <laughs> can, we get a, can we get like a like a three option poll of Team Legolas, Team Gimli, and Team Aragorn? You can submit poll ideas like... at any time to uh, pod, well, well, just podcast so or contact at lotroplayers.com. So <laughs> either one, just send in poll ideas. I need them. Zynga says Team Toriel, by the way. Oh, uh, no. Right. Uh, I'd be behind that. <laughs> Maybe Team Still Elf Captain. Not, right? Team Elf Captain from books that doesn't necessarily mean that character. How about Team Toriel minus Legolas? Like, no Legolas. <laughs> Just <laughs> okay. pretending Legolas doesn't exist just, and just, just subtract the Legolas. <laughs> and Keely isn't and at the, the door. And the, the Keely, yeah. Yeah. Subtract just take out those two characters about, okay. and then her. So Team Tariel fighting orcs. <laughs> so Team Tariel or fine. Team Orcs? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, very well. We'll move on. We also have a post of The Hobbit in 72 Lego Seconds, one of those Brother Workshop items. And in case you are worried about The Hobbit in that Peter Jackson has managed to stretch it out to last three three-hour movies. That's right. He stretched out The Hobbit to nine hours. If you think that's a little long, then you can see the Brothers Workshop version, which takes only 72 seconds. Any more comments, Sanding? Considering this is only 72 seconds, it tells the story really well. <laughs> I can't... I mean, sure, some of the things are sped up so they can get through it a little quicker, but wow. I... You get the gist. I don't think I'd be able to like do that in a video like even just talking like what happened in 72 seconds that this would have taken a lot of time to 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 weed it down to just the like the key important issues and it goes chapter by chapter so it, it gives like little chapter summaries too if you um want to see that as well so all right very well and that is if you don't have time to see the peter jackson version then <laughs> Or if you do and you just want to see a really cool Hobbit video. All right. And speaking of Hobbits, we also have... Um, I always 
can never pronounce this name. Eogro. <laughs> Yogro. Okay, because he puts it down, Yogro Mary Belly, and it's all done in one word. I always have trouble remembering where the split. He needs a page break in his name, doesn't he? Finally. No, he needs a <laughs> he needs a space in his name. <laughs> <laughs> but Yogro Mary Belly posted a item called "I Once Was a Hobbit," and this is about a certain person who was. Born a hobbit, but isn't quite a hobbit anymore. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was born a hobbit, but he turned into a hero, you mean? <laughs> sure, that's what I meant. Frodo yeah, was true. born a hobbit and turned into a wraith. Kind of, sort of. It, it was he, This process was started, at least. Well, okay, but this is the first hobbit to turn into a non-hobbit so to speak oh okay a yeah this is a one. this is a really good uh continuation of the lore series and i i really enjoyed this this title i was like oh is he not doing a lore article nope he is <laughs> it's <laughs> it's continuing on and so i i really enjoyed the title of this and um it's as always you know another great lore article so great job all right then we'll go on now into the question of the week. Atheros, what have you got to say this time? Uh, the question of the week I decided to come up with this time is kind of related to the Gondor and Beyond article uh, video we did, where we kind of talk about what we can maybe be doing in the future. Except this one is kind of looking at where we would go beyond Pelennor Fields, which is the last confirmed content we have, at least at this point. So the uh, first question I have uh, come up with is the is after the Battle of Pelennor Field, so we won that battle, Mordor was for now subdued, and Frodo and Sam, I think at that point, are either in Mordor or they just made it inside recently. I don't remember exactly where the timeline is there, but either way, it's kind of a situation in where we're not quite sure where we would go after that. It would assume that we follow Aragorn's army to the Black Gate but they sort of take quite a while to get there and they kind of make take a couple of stops at the same time so the question is uh, assuming that we go ourselves go to Mordor uh, in what situation would we actually end up going there without kind of ruining the whole book in terms of getting Frodo caught by Sauron and uh, what could we actually do while in there. Uh, and then. I think that's kind of already been answered by the devs. Um, we're we're going to be going and freeing those uh, people who need freed in Mordor that are taken captive way far away from Frodo and Sam. Um, I think that... I think we'll... You know, after the Battle of Pelennor Fields, there will be a session play to remind us, hey, Frodo and Sam are still out there type thing. Um, and then... And so that'll be like our first glimpse at Mordor, I think. Um, and then our characters will go for some story purpose and go into Mordor, start freeing stuff up, and then somehow we'll make it back for the battle at the Black Gate. And then you know the ring will be destroyed, and that'll be that'll be the end of uh, Mordor. And we'll, we might go back in to like see how things have changed, but. Like it, it'd be kind of cool actually if we, post ring destruction, went over towards Mount Doom and stuff like that. I guess, and so like have us not go there aside from session play, beforehand, and then have us like actually be able to explore the landscape, post ring destruction would be kind of cool. I guess. It would be a brand new type of landscape, I believe. I don't think there's really that many. Volcan volcanic um, lava areas aside from maybe the rift mm -hmm. yeah it'd be something totally new um, I I don't know for sure if you know that last part will happen if we'll actually take our characters personally to Mount Doom and stuff like that but it'd be kind of weird if we don't and even like Aragorn and you know his uh, group of people go to make sure that Sauron really has been uh at least not being able to be detected in Mordor. Um, mm. And, you know, they go around and make sure that it's fairly cleared out, and then they go down to Harad and do all that stuff. 
Mm -hmm. So I think that you know if we come back for the Battle of the Black Gate and then go back in to explore what's happened in Mordor, that'd be kind of cool. So have that kind of go into Mordor and then turn around, come back, and then go back in with Aragorn to a different mm -hmm. part. All right. Uh, Brax, what do you think? Well, I guess the only thing I have to add on to that is I think that they're going to want it to, to give us the, the view of Mordor pre-ring destruction and post-ring destruction, kind of like the Isengard thing. So I don't know if the session play is going to be enough to give us a good picture of what pre-ring destruction Mordor looks like with the tower and everything. Um, it may be. It might, it, depending on how they instance and session that, it might be, but... I, I certainly think they're going to want to give us both of those uh, timeline viewpoints. Possibly, um, maybe I'm just throwing an idea how they could maybe do it is say if we go into Mordor from where uh, Kirithungal is, and that's it, pre ring destruction. Mm -hmm. And then if we go in from the Black Gate, that is where we actually see it destroyed. And then through that way, we can kind of. Um, do all the post Mordor stuff, kind of how they did it with Isengard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that could be. Uh, any other ideas? Well, so I just, well, my, I think that the most likely place is, it depends on how confident they are that Frodo got through Kirith Ungo, because if if they think that Frodo did go through that and is already passed there, then they might send us as a distraction for to Minas Morgul. In other words, draw people outside of the pass mm -hmm. into Minas Morgul. But the problem is, will that stir up so much in the area that they think that it might make things worse? So that's I'm on the balance on that one, whether or not I think that they would send us there because they think it'll pull people out or if they think that people moving in through there might be going right by Frodo and might make things worse. Well that's kind of how I was with the Dead Marshes where they're like we don't want to attract too much attention even though you've already attracted all this attention. <laughs> it just seemed kind of kind of weird how that works. So I don't think that they're too worried about attracting attention after the Dead Marshes update but maybe Mordor is another beast. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, anything, well, anyone else have anything else to add? I'm wondering right. where Shelob's going to work into this because that's something we haven't talked about. Yeah, we've heard, like we've mentioned it a couple of times about maybe it being a raid or a six man. I'm thinking that if it's going to happen, is going to be pre ring destruction, but mm. Mm. it'll be like when we I, actually go near that area to begin with. I was thinking yeah, but post. I can't see us actually going into Kirith Ungol before. Before the ring is destroyed, because yeah. that's yeah. the last place they want us to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking right. post ring is where the, that'd make more sense. Maybe not. We might go there before. I don't know. Hmm. Possibility. Uh, if that's it, then we'll move on to the next question. All right. Uh, the next one is uh, looking at post more law. So I think there was a dev post quite a few months ago now, maybe two or three, uh, about uh, what their priorities are going to be after the ring is destroyed. And the, the major thing they emphasized was that the scouring of the Shire is the most important one. That's the one they're going to be doing first, from what they said. Now, obviously, that may have changed since then, but taking that as the their main intention... How do you think they could actually handle that? Because obviously the Shire is a wreck at that point. Like there's going to be have to be a huge amount of phasing if they're going to use the same Shire that we we've already requested in before, just to make it look kind of destroyed and it will be on a completely different level from what they've done before in other regions. I mean, they have that South Farthing area that isn't actually in the game yet. Do you think they could maybe use that as a destroyed version and then have that be where we do all the questing? But the, I think the main, main problem I see with that is that there are a lot of key areas that yeah. are notable for being I, wrecked, like the party tree in Bag End itself. Yeah, the, yeah, we the, have to go to. the Battle of Bywater is 
well and by water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it takes place over, you know, the whole scouring takes place over the Shire. It's not just um, one part of it. I could see them maybe because of time or budget restrictions having to do something like that, but I think that if they're going to do a full zone phase, this would be the time to do it. This would be kind of like the final completion of their phasing system, I think, is mm. taking on the scouring of the Shire. It would be a lot of work. A so lot impact, of work. What impact would that have on role players who want to role play in the Shire as it was before the scouring? Well, if you make it like Helm's Deep, where you right click on, you know, a barrel and you get to the, you know, appropriate version. And have yeah, a pre and post. To be one of the two options there. They can either do that, which is like a different uh, version of it, in which case you can only go in the Shire. You can't leave the zone to go other places. Mm -hmm. Or I think uh, I think Kibblenet Dragon in the chat suggested this. And, uh, at the same time as us doing this scouting thing, they implement the South Farthing. So we quest in there, and then we go up through that gate into a different version of the Shire. So Eisenhower yep. style. Yeah, and that that I think would that's be. Most likely. I think that would they, be probably they, more likely they if work. they could get the landscape to line up appropriately, because it was a little bit easier, I think, with the way that they built the Isengard area, because they went in planning to do that. I don't know what, if anything, that they planned to do with the original Shire now. So, mm -hmm. that's that's the only difference is that you know Isengard they planned out all that stuff and had a specific way to build the landscape to make sure that it all fit in nice and tight. Now that they're doing the Shire, assuming you know, they said they're going to do the Skyring Shire, so whenever that comes along, it's going to be tough. I wouldn't be surprised to make if it. we get a Shire revamp beforehand. Yeah, I would see it more likely to have a Shire revamp than I would to see the whole thing phased without. Yeah, because while they're doing these like graphics changes, assuming they do either make a copy of it or do something like that, they would inevitably change up some of the lower quality textures and things like that, have thicker grass in all the areas and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of work <laughs> to mm -hmm. regardless of, like even if they limit it to just instances even or something like that, it'll be a lot of work to to get this all done. Uh, any other thoughts? Okay then, we'll move on to the last question, which is uh, uh, something we've discussed a lot on this podcast, and I think other people have too, is that Turbine has a, is kind of known for doing this in that they will take, say, like a line or two that Tolkien talks about. I think the loss off in Forakel is probably the best example, where they take that small mention and then they create this whole cultural this whole zone or this whole storyline based around it so uh the question is here is what could they maybe use at the end of uh pretty much the end of the book really or at least post model what could they work with to give us things to do after the ring is destroyed or what areas could we go to and explore if there's any ideas here what are the odds of going to the rest of mirkwood do you guys think uh, thing I think the main problem I would see with that is that there's really no reason to unless they change the timing so that we go there while the battle for Mirkwood is actually going on. So I mean, Dumbledore is still around. I'd kind of like to see them have conclusion to that story and mess with the timeline. I'd really like them to see at the very end have the whole uh, Moria storyline come to completion. That well, the Moria story point. can't because I don't think the Iron Gar. I always got the impression that Turbine believes the Iron Garrison ultimately fails, and there's right. another expedition later that succeeds. Yep. In which I would like to see them take the timeline all the way to that point. Does that mean then that we would see them be there to actually like help them and see them when they fail? Yeah. Or that we come back and they've already failed, and then we help the next group come in and take over. Either one would be really interesting because I don't uh, think we've actually seen, you know, we've never done that before in Lotro. And yeah. if they had the time, 
that would be a nice like final thing that they could do that was in the lore. Yeah, but that would have to be after Grey Havens. Right. Well, would it? Yes, because the It's several years later. The reason later. why people say is that it's in the fourth age and the fourth age is post Grey Havens. Mm. And what would be I even guess. cooler is if and this is like crazy speculation is if they showed this map turn into our world like very gradually over time. <laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> I was thinking maybe of the of the Haradrim. Right. Yeah, that is a pretty good example. Mm -hmm. Cuz I think it both in terms of it being a region that's fairly close by where coming up now to fighting the Haradrim and I think there's a I think they mention in the books that even though Sauron's defeated, they have to actually deal with them and pacify them, so to speak. I think Aragorn and Eomer yeah. go down there to actually deal with them themselves. That's what I'd so, like to see. Yeah, I kind of consider Harad kind of a, a given. Just because Aragorn goes down there and, you know, a lot of people end up traveling down that way to to clear out stuff. And so I, I would imagine that you know, we'd take them on as well. That's kind of like the the final enemy. You know, we had um, Angmar, Isengard, Mordor, and then Harad, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that we'll do the scouring before we go down there? Ah, uh, that's because that would make more sense time wise. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think they're going to get in as much of the books as possible first. And then maybe turn to some of the extra stuff. But at the same time, they could kind of do like an establishing, here's like your rod enemies. Now go all the way back up to the Shire. <laughs> and that is a lot of find out what's going on there. And then now go all the way back down to Harad. <laughs> do, do we get Elephant stuff. Mount for this? <laughs> well, I think that would be a necessity, finally. If you'd, you'd have to just have... You could have an entire skirmish on top of the Oliphants, just... There's there's a lot honestly, of possibilities here. At that point, they probably just hand wave any kind of how long would it take to get to here issue because there's just so much yeah. traveling in different places. You and have to do. the one thing that I really hope happens, and I really hope they have time, is to return to places like Dunland and other places where storylines were not 100% wrapped up and still not 100% wrap up. Still keep a couple loose ends here and there, but ramp up a few more plot lines as we kind of do our return back to the Shire. That would be a really nice way if they had enough time to do it to end things off, I think. And it'd also give them time to prepare the Shire for the scouring because that's going to take... If they are going to do like the whole zone being phased or even just part of the zones being phased, I would imagine that that would take about the same amount of effort as building Minas Tirith in my mind because mm. having to do a whole zone and decide if you need to revamp the zone first or if you need to phase it and if you do all that stuff like that's that's a lot of work just for a conclusion to a story I think what they might do is obviously when Frodo and the whole uh, group does their whole return journey we go through each of these areas and we have like the ep by the epic most likely they'll have like a couple of quests maybe or maybe just one where you kind of meet up with those people you talked to a long time ago like I think in Dunland there's those some of the specific Dunlandings that you end up learning by name that I've forgotten at this point <laughs> and you kind of maybe catch up a little I wouldn't expect any widespread phasing or anything though because I think that would be it probably be on what they could do. Yeah, I'd just like to, in in the storyline fixes on the way to the Shire, I'd just like to see instances or something like that where you could just, you know, talk to the, the people oh, that were and there. I think, yeah, um, Barnabas mentions in the chat too, we have to take the Grey Company home. And I'm positive. Do I we? Can't remember, I can't remember his name, but there's Look, one ranger last. who says, there is this one ranger who says he wants to have a have us buy him a drink when this whole thing is over. I think that bit is they're actually going to make happen. How cool would that be? They can find They'll their own too... way home. I don't think they, they can. Be... 
I I don't I don't think that they can, but at the same time, I don't know if we will help them back. That'd be a great way to, you know, have all I'm the stuff in Rangers. That'd be a great way to sum up everything in Ariador, yeah. but I, I don't we, know. I don't know. I don't think I we'll think walk that... with them back, but I think we will have some sort of final meetup with whoever's left by the end. Of I think it. that's I a lot more likely. Purpose, but... yeah. I think I think, I think we break up with them maybe, at Minas Tirith. Maybe, yeah. Well, some of them are are probably going to be members of Aragorn's court. Yeah, there's there's Aragorn's, you know, becoming king ceremony, and then we say goodbye to all the rangers and everybody, and go on our own little journey back. I, I see that much more likely than following a company back the whole way, but I could sure be wrong. Aragorn, yeah. <laughs> to hold Elrond's hand and show him the way to the mailbox. I don't think he's ever seen <laughs> <laughs> So that he can send letters I, to I the player. Oh, letters? man. I can send them myself. I can talk to other people on my own. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. Um, do, you, do you think that there will be anything post-scouring Shire besides Harad, maybe? Will we do the more, yeah, will we do the something in other places? Or will that be... The end is the scouring or Harad. The only other, I think, major area they could do, like a whole campaign's worth, is maybe Rune. But yeah. that I kind of maybe feels too much like Harad. And there's so like, little sure. about that place. Which, on the other hand, could be a lot of potential. It could be. But. but yeah, I'm not sure how well know. they could maybe. Uh, well, differentiate it from. Harad. There are a lot more heavy armor, um, mounted on horseback type people, aren't they? They're closer uh, to almost like a general. Rohan. Yeah, they're where the um, Wayne Riders came from and mm -hmm. everything like that. Yeah, they're That'd they're be... closer to more like a Rohan type people, so it'd be different. I think I think they could definitely make it different, but it would probably feel a little similar. Yeah, that's really the only other option. I don't think they'd be willing to go to like big campaigns worth for Harad and Rune. Well, let me ask you guys this question: Do you think the rights will be extended beyond 2017? Well, that's uh -huh. the question. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I don't think they are interested in doing that personally. You don't no, think Turbine and the team, or you don't think Warner Brothers? I don't think Warner Brothers is interested in, in doing that. That that's just my opinion after what we've seen with the layoffs the last couple uh, months, and I don't know. I just I have a I have a feeling that they're just not. If they're going to use the IP, they're going to use it somewhere else. Now, if if they can use the same IP that they're using for other newer games and apply that towards Lord of the Rings Online, they might continue doing it. But I'm not sure exactly how that contract is written. So I, I think to, to extend it specifically for Lotro is probably pretty low on their priority list. Well, yes, but I think that bec it depends on a few things, I think. I think if um, Christopher Tolkien passes away sometime between now and then, which he's getting up in years, it's possible. That could totally change the landscape of how the rights system would work and everything else. And... Warner Brothers would basically be given pretty much free reign to do whatever they want with the, the license within like a, a few limits, but they'd pretty much be allowed to do whatever they want. And if that happens, then there's it's it's very hard to predict, I think, what would happen unless Lotro really is just not profitable for them. But I think as long as Lotro is making a profit for Warner Brothers, which I think they are. They're just, they just might not be meeting exactly where Warner Brothers wants them to be profit-wise. I think that they'll keep keep them going as long as it's making a profit. I don't know. What I do you guys think, think? Do you think that we'll? I think see for me, I think I don't think it's incredibly likely they would extend it. I think if they were going to, it'd probably be like a year at most like mm. not the mm -hmm. full 
was it like two or three years that they normally do, I just don't think they'd have that much confidence in it. Maybe a year just to give them a little bit more time to finish things up. But, I mean, even that seems a little unlikely to me. Yep. I don't know, I think it's going to be extended. To what level? I don't know yet. All right, then, with that up, we'll head on to donations. Our donations for the, let's give a big thanks to DJ Pimp Daddy for his $10 or more donation to Locho Players. Make sure everyone donates this week to the Locho Players Extra Life campaign. All donations to my charity, that means DJ Pimp Daddies, will become in-game NPCs in the upcoming Locho Players RPG that I will be making live on a 24-hour stream starting, Saturday, starting Friday, October 24th in the evening. Also, all donations will have a DLC code to unlock Super Fun Mode, which includes instant kill holy hand grenades, <laughs> the ability to write graffiti on specific walls and surfaces in the game, and if he has time, cosmetic outfits, and maybe a skirmish. There you go, and Seth Rhythm, also, finally. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yes, but you got to remember, I'm in competition with him, as we'll see later in this, and unlocks <laughs> DJ Pimp Daddy singing several songs in the game terribly, including the recently recorded Welcome to the Braxwood. Braxwolf can comment on this. Do you wish to, Brax? Are you with us, Brax? Apparently yeah, sorry. I'm here. <laughs> okay. have, you, have you guys ever seen a movie that's so bad that it's good? <laughs> this is a pitch. This is a pitch. Because because DJ Pimp Daddy doing Axl Rose in Welcome to the Braxwood is just on that level. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. then. Okay. Uh, I guess the answer is that. It's well worth a donation. And, yes, DJ Pimp Daddy does admit, yes, this is pay to win before you ask. <laughs> Lastly... If you are on the fence as to whether to donate to his cause or to Pine Leafs, do it for the kids and donate to, well, I'm not going to say which one he says, because <laughs> despite what he says, he says that I will just skirmish, um, skirmish the money away. No, I don't, because your donations go directly to the... <laughs> Two extra life and then Pine the leaf. hospitals. And what I happened get... behind the scenes? Did you guys get in a tussle? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're ha having a bit of a skirmish on this. We're having a skirmish. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that. We're just reading oh, okay. the script as is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He says to donate responsibly. That I agree with. Yes, donate to extra life to Lotro players, but. I would have to give you different advice as to who in <laughs> Finally, now's, you now's your time to, you know, plead to him to include skirmishes in the game. There you go. Well, by the, by the way, I just wanted to give a quick update on how we're doing extra life-wise, if that's all right. Yep. Um, the Lotro players team is at $820 out of our $3,000 goal. So that's... I think it's twenty some percent. I think we're 20, either twenty seven percent. Yeah, we're just over seven hundred fifty. I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yep. So twenty seven percent. Um, we've got one week before the marathon, so we're uh, we're looking for a little bit more help there. Although certain individuals are doing pretty well, um, I would say <laughs> DJ DJ needs your help. Pineleaf actually is doing pretty well. Oh, Pineleaf, you're you're beating DJ Pimp Daddy now. Somebody, That's somebody why get... he sent that letter. <laughs> Draculetta has really vaulted ahead in the last week. He's done a great job. Um, American Golden Star, they're doing, you know, as you would expect. Um, and, you know, there's, there's someone else in there that's doing pretty well, too. So I would say um, I, I 
have a high suspicion that during the marathon, we're going to see the Lotro community come through on this one. Even though we're only 27% now, I expect that we're going to get pretty close to that $3,000 goal next yeah, weekend. But but we need your guys' help. We're just, we're just one week away from the marathon, and we definitely need your guys' support. And also, I'm in last. Please, please help out <laughs> Team and Deng. Forget Arwen, forget Eowyn. Help out and <laughs> help uh, reach uh, reach the goal because I, I really do want to uh, help the people uh, at my children's hospital and hopefully we can uh, get that done because it's definitely a very good cause and um, this is our version of the fellowship walk this year so if you are were you know waiting out for that or something like that it's it's not going to happen we're we're doing this instead. So uh, please help us out, help us reach our goal, and help sick children in need. Yes. And the, you can donate at the donations page found on Lotro Player's Extra Life team page. And DJ Pimp Daddy makes a note that he has one. He has a pinned tweet at DJ Pimp Daddy on his Twitter site. And let me make it even easier for the audience. How many of you, our audience, have been to LotroPlayers.com? Hopefully, you're all raising your hands right now across uh, the world. Um, if not, not, then... Study um, weird. Well, <laughs> maybe. They, um, they if if you those. haven't been to LotroPlayers.com, it's very simple. Just go to an internet browser, type in LotroPlayers.com, hit enter, and make your way to our site. On the right side of the page, near it's actually the top, uh, the top widget right now is a link and uh, a widget to the uh, Extra Life campaign. Um, so it's that simple. Just go, you know, be on your way to the news that comes up on the site this week and, you know, maybe click on the, the donation page to, uh, to uh, you know, help support sick children in need. All right. Very well. That was Thank a shameless you. plug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> To help support Lotro Players, simply go to the donations page where you can help support the podcast of Lotro Players and also help support the site. We have $5 and $10 mentions where you can donate to get a mention on one or all of our active podcasts for an episode depending on the amount. For $5, you get a mention on the podcast of your choice. For $10 or more, you get a mention on all of our active podcasts. In that case, I'm what I just gave you about was the donations to Lotro Players, which is a separate donation page from the Lotro Players group for the for Extra Life. So make sure you go to the right donations page depending on which one you wish to contribute for. I'll go even a step further. Don't donate to us this week. Donate to Extra Life. It's it's much better cause for this week. We'll survive a week. <laughs> we can yeah, make we'll it. We'll survive a week. Um, All right. <laughs> yeah, definitely help the sick children in need. Uh, DJ Pimp Daddy says, I got no beef with you, Pine Leaf. It's just that every good story needs a good villain. I'll let the audience choose which one of us is the villain. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say what? like that? Yeah, what? Because he's fly, yo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Rax Thanks has got my jive. <laughs> yeah, you sound like... Uh... Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very well. Oh. <laughs> so, as for feedback, we do not have any reviews this week, but we do have some featured comments, and we'll begin with Roger, who left a comment in response to the layoffs. And Dan, could you please read this? Yes, I can, because you know Roger's clearly I read please. the last comment so well. Oh, oh joy. <laughs> Whether the layoffs do or do not have an effect on the current plans for Lotro, we will never know, because no company will ever publicly disclose such sensitive business information. I believe that as long as the core players continue to finance the game to a level that is acceptable to Turbine, and I'm going to insert Warner Brothers, possibly business model, then content will be forthcoming. Of course, the quality and quantity of that content will reflect the resources Turbine have available. I agree with this 100%. Obviously, it's a little bit logical, but 
I really do b believe that as long as players stay positive and spend money as if the game is not ending, the game will not end. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy type thing uh, that is the term that they use in communication. Um, and I think that as long as people believe that the game is going to continue and support t Turbine like it will, the game will continue. Um, if you know you have issues with you know maintaining confidence through various forums and things like that, stay away from them and enjoy the game that Turbine has made. Um, if you feel that the game's not as good anymore, you know, leave the game and don't spend money anymore. But uh, don't let other people, particularly like groups of people on forums, influence your opinion. Make sure that it's your opinion about the game. Let me add, right. I don't, I don't have any problem that Turbine doesn't come out and say, well, these are, you know, the the things that that the layoffs is going to affect, you know, bit by bit. Here's all the bullet points. The only thing that I would, I guess, hope that they would do is that if they've already communicated to the players what's going to happen, and something is now either not going to happen or going to happen differently, that's what I would expect them to communicate. Yeah, I think turbines. Like I think uh, Roger mentions it, their core group for Lotro, uh, that is the people who are here for the it, the fact that it's Tolkien. They're here for the story. They're here mm -hmm. for the world. I think as long as the quality of their story and their world content is good and they're con consistently putting it out, I think people will stay here just to play it. Yeah, I really do believe that just off of Tolkien fans that are currently playing Lotro, Lotro can stay funded enough to at least make it to 2017. I... I'd be shocked if that, that wasn't true. I think that there's enough players that enjoy Tolkien that are playing the game right now that they can they can help carry us over to there at least. Hmm. All right, thank you. So now we go to our second comment, and that is from Barnabas, who left a comment on last week's episode. Thanks again for the read. I'm not sure about big battles, but spicy battles sound awesome. I think I might have to take a stab at a holiday song based on RNG. I've been working on some lines already. Then when Stormy et more Eve and Dane came to oh then when Storm oh then when Stormy <laughs> et more Eve and Dane came to say Rudolph with your knife grip tight. Won't you join my craid tonight? Then all the <laughs> monsters friended him, and they made this decree. Rudolph the Naughty Goblin, you'll gain lots of infamy. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't play as a goblin. <laughs> yeah. FYI, a craid is a creep raid. Yep. I was wondering about that. That that was very funny. I I hope Barnabas that this becomes a thing. I hope that you do make an ending story because you're already off to a great start. So hopefully you'll uh, you'll keep going on that. And you've already written you know four yeah. origin stories. Might as well finish out the rest of the team. I mean, you know. Yeah. Well, at least I'll amuse myself, or maybe I should. Change it to ending the PV peer. By the way, that's what Barnabas said, not finally. Just yes. <laughs> Zinger, Zinger thinks that was a violation because you didn't sing it. You have to do it over. <laughs> that's okay, finally. If you can keep going. Elise left a comment on Blub's rating article and Etheros. Could you please read this? Uh, yeah. Uh, she says, uh, "Great article, Blood." Uh, it's Bloodborne, I assume. Yeah. Uh, having come into Lotro just after Rise of Rohan, I missed all those fun days. I am generally a solo player, but I kept hearing word of the fabled Balrog in the Rift. Merkwood. <laughs> I don't know what that's. <laughs> so that's actually how it reads. Uh, in their absences, amusing plot, etc. And eventually some kind folks took me in for my first raid, which was so fun. <laughs> I think it sounds so sarcastic. Yes. <laughs> Believe me, it, it's it's not written like that. I'm sure it's just my voice. 
Uh, I learned a lot about my classes, tips, and tricks just from those content. However, I never fit in with the raiding scene on my server. I love goofing off, and honestly, wiping is a blast. Yes, it is. So nowadays, I stick <laughs> with my group of friends and teach lower-level King Nate's tricks we learned from running those instances. I'd love to see Lotro implement a free people's downscaling system just to experience it all on level with my friends. Doubt it'll happen, but I still got hope for traditional instance and raid content to make a return one day. That said, Shelob raid, please. Yeah, actually, I think he would have fit well with the dumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Which is still going, I guess, and, you know, eventually one of them is not going to be able to do it anymore, so you could get on the shortlist. That's... <laughs> That's what needs to happen. Now All we're right. gonna have like everyone that likes raiding be on the short list for CSDM's dumb list. Uh, and now, honestly, um, Elise's perspective is pretty much the same as mine. I kind of joined in with free to play, but I didn't really get involved with grouping that much until Eyes and Guard. Yeah. So right. I did end up missing all those big instances that people love to talk about mm -hmm. so fondly. Yeah, I, I so, actually, and as people notice from the. Uh, adventures I tend to wipe groups a lot so <laughs> yeah, I actually was in a raiding ken during Isengard and we actually took characters up through some of the I, I think we made new characters so we could practice the um, old Angmar raids back then so we could get like conditioned like our people conditioned mm -hmm. for you know taking orders exactly when they need to and stuff like that and showing how serious it can be and then raiding. helping them work up to the Isengard level to raid with us. It was a very, very different experience than anything I've seen in in um, any of the games I've played before. Raiding's its own beast, and I hope that they can at least have one last good raid to end on. That would be a great thing, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, very well. As for emails, we did not receive any emails this week, which means that there will not be an origin story this week. First week, we haven't got one. But you can contact us by emailing us at podcast at lotroplayers.com, and you could also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Lotro Players at Lotro Players, Andang at PVMP underscore Andang, Braxwolf at Braxwolf, Sithrith at Sithrith, Draculetta at Draculetta underscore 72, Etheros at Etheros, Lily Kate at Lily Kate Buggins, Mystery at Mystery XOX, and Pineleaf at Pineleaf Needles. The Players Alliance has two live shows every week on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News and... On Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lotro Players News. And you can join us for the live shows at lotroplayers.com slash live. And you can also join us on Langeable for Lotro Players Adventures every Saturday at 5 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Thank you all for listening. And that is all for tonight. And this is Pineleaf Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>